Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video is about last minute BMAT tips. I thought that since the BMAT is coming up on 3rd November, which is quite quick, this would be a short video just giving some useful tips that can help in the exam. I know I haven't been really consistent with my uploading and it's mainly because I've been settling into um, university um, trying to get everything sorted out. So for those of you who don't know, I'm currently at Imperial College London studying medicine in my first year. And so I took the BMAT um, last year scoring 5.4 in section 1, 5.7 in section 2 and 3A, enabling me to achieve an interview for improvement and consequentially an offer. And so today's video will be structured in three different sections. Firstly, I'll give a brief overview as to what the two section entails, which I presume many of you will already know. Then the second one is I'll give you useful tips for each section individually, um, which will really help the exam. And thirdly, I'll give you overall tips and a conclusion uh, so that you guys can score the best possible marks. So the first section. So I'll talk about the three different sections within the BMAT. So in section one, we have the idea of problem solving and critical thinking. Section two is the idea of maths, biology, chemistry and physics. And section three is obviously the essay section. So firstly with section one, how can someone improve in problem solving and critical thinking? So with problem solving, it's really about time. I know this is essential for every section, but with problem solving, it's much more relevant. The idea that some questions can be really, really long and can be quite draining on to read. And so the questions which you think are really long, flag them, just guess and move on. You won't be negatively marked, so I think it's much better to just flag and be more confident in the questions you can answer. As some, someone who told me this is play to your strengths. So for me, if there was like a pin question like, for example, um, if we represent nine as a certain uh, letter, if we represent seven as a certain letter and use this to make a, create a pin or something, those questions I was quite good at. And so I always used to like prioritizing them over, for example, 3D images and having to try and visit, visualize the shape. And so it's really important that you play to your strengths in an exam. Um, also, since I just mentioned it, the idea of 3D shapes, the idea like cubes and um, how to visualize it, something which really helped when preparing is just to create like um, a cube or uh, a cube tessellation so that in the exam you can use it and uh, not well obviously you can't use the exam but in preparation you can use it and it'll really help save time. So now moving on to critical thinking. So this is similar to like the verbal reasoning section of the UCAT, the idea that you present with some sort of essay, you have to find like the main conclusion, argument etc and then pick one of the options. Now the key thing with this is that Many people presume, like, let's say the main conclusion will always be at the end of the of the paragraph. But this is not always the case. If you read very closely, sometimes one sentence, or for example, there may be um, uh, hidden within the within the paragraph, can be the main conclusion. And so it's not very so it's important that you just don't go straight to the end of the paragraph, presuming it's there. Furthermore, it's always really important that in order to find out any argument or any point within the essay, that you fully understand the conclusion. Because if you don't understand what it's talking about, so the conclusion, then it really won't make sense for the rest of it. So let's take, let's say it's talking about sport and uh, exam results. The main conclusion is suggests that playing more sport um, improves your exam results, but playing too much sport uh, leaves less time for exams, and therefore you won't want to perform as well. So that's the main conclusion. And now the question asks, what is the benefit of, uh, what is the main point of sport in this and if you don't understand that the point of sport is the idea that it improves your exercise improves your fitness and, it, and essentially the main conclusion is that it improves your exam results then you won't be able to pick one of the options because all the options will be there to trick you out but they're all linked to the main conclusion and so the main tip i would give for this section is always know what the main conclusion is so the way i like to think about this is that you have a main conclusion which is backed up by evidence that is within the extract and it's very important that you're able to identify these, that these are called premises. And premises are required um, and can be asked, for example, a question like what's the main premise of the argument here? And so it's very important that you identify these. Furthermore, something which is less commonly identified is an assumption. Assumption is something which, as stated by the name, is not indirectly in the text, but can also be used to support the main conclusion. And so it's really important that when practicing for the exam, or even in the exam, that you know three basic things how to identify the main conclusion, what a premise is, and what an assumption is. I think these three things are really key for the critical reasoning section and can help you score the best mark. So now moving on to section two. So this is a section that involves maths, biology, chemistry, and physics. 
And when I did my BMAT, I didn't do physics, obviously, for A-level, so I prioritised this. And I think in an exam, um, I was quite confident on the physics section, and I think I performed decently on it. However, my weaker section, I would say, was perhaps the bio biology. And I think that's really the key. The idea that I worked really hard on my weaknesses, which is obviously very good, but then my strengths, I didn't really play towards it and so it's really important that you prioritize what you recap but also make sure you, you improve upon your strengths furthermore another tip that i would give in section two is that whilst the questions are supposedly gcse there's a lot of things to trick you out for example let's say it could the question could be asked about recessive disorder so the answer could be that the chromosome is recessive now you see an answer option that has recessive you take it off click it and then move straight on However, if you have spent a bit more time, you would have realized that the answer option says it's um, on the X, it's an X-linked chromosome uh, recessive disorder or it's an autosomal recessive disorder, so either sex-linked or not sex-linked. And so just spending a bit more time and then identifying which answer option is between those two would enable you to get a mark and also not uh, spend, not enable you to waste time that you have on the question. Um, this does go contradict to what I've said about the idea of not wasting time, but if you already spend the time trying to find the answer option, you may as well spend a bit extra to find out the exact one. Secondly, I'd also say make sure you've revised everything within the topic, because it's really bad if you uh, attend the exam and you don't know the content in the exam. I think it's much worse because had you revised it, you'd be in much better position. Sure, if you get the answer wrong because of the keywords, that's fine. I mean, you could have got it, but because of the way it's phrased, it can be quite difficult. Make sure that you don't leave any stone unturned and have a look at the syllabus before attending the exam because you never know a question, a topic that you could leave out, there could potentially be a question on it. So now moving on to section 3 of the BMAT, which in my opinion is perhaps the hardest section. This is because it's really hard for yourself to know how you're doing in the essay. The idea that sometimes you could be really confident thinking that it's really great and it will make sense to you, and other times you're quite disappointed thinking that it doesn't really make sense to you and there's no logical uh, flow. So here are some tips to know whether to, for you to be more confident in your essay and the idea some tips that can really help in the exam. So firstly, when doing the essay, the more important part is to plan. And you've probably heard this a million times, but it's way more important that you spend more time planning than writing the essay. This is because when you have a good plan, you can simply just look back onto it and then know simply what to write in the essay. And so there's no time wasted writing because you've got a good structured plan. And the best way to do this is to know what your strength is. Again, I mentioned that so many times, but it's really important. So for me, I really like the idea of writing bullet points. And so I had a clear argument. For example, let's say we're talking about the idea of obesity. We, I can have a bullet point saying obesity and then have a sub bullet point saying the rate of obesity in the UK has been increasing um, at a very fast rate over the past years and perhaps include a figure as well. Something like that is very simple and I, I know I can explain that using more words in my actual essay, therefore creating a good plan. Um, also in this section, I think it's very important rather than just waffling on, since you only have a page, you have a good structure the idea that you know what to write is. So for example, your first two, your first uh, sentence of first couple of sentence can be introduction, then you can have, for example, your main bulk, and then you can have the kind of conclusion. I think it's very important that whatever you do, you follow a good structure and you stick to it so that in the exam you can replicate this as well. Finally, another thing that I would add is the idea that your vocabulary is very important. You need to be able to convey to the examiner what you're writing about and also because you need good grammar and punctuation and everything, you need to secure that A uh, mark. Um, but also, I think it's equally important that you don't have too flowery vocabulary. The idea that if your vocabulary is too of a too good or too high level that the text will make it confusing then it's not really good i think it should be to a level where it makes sense to the examiner and to you and it makes sense in the context provided there's no point using too high vocabulary um, if it doesn't make sense in the extract so those are my, are my tips for each individual section and i'll now be discussing the overall tips uh, for the bmat so firstly the most important one which you guys have probably heard multiple times is keep track of time I cannot emphasize how important this is because in the actual exam you will feel a bit more nervous and that's that's obviously very common. I felt a bit more nervous and I found myself flagging more questions and I thought to myself that I was running out of time. Whereas in reality if I'd calmed down a bit um, I would already realize that I have much more time and 
uh, perhaps scored better. Obviously, I'm quite happy with my score, but I think um, it's being more reflective. I think you have enough time. It's just that you need to keep a track of the clock. And since it's also digital for you guys, um, make sure you're practicing on digital software for the essay, for instance, instead of handwriting it. Secondly, the idea that because if one section doesn't go as well as you think it does, does it, that doesn't mean that you can't do good in the other section. They're not linked to each other. And so just forget about the section you've done and now focus on the next section, ensuring that you perform really good in one so that the other one can be made up for it. Obviously, for different units, it can be different stakes, but don't let other sections' performance affect the ones you have forward. So for example, if you didn't do that well in section one, it doesn't matter. Focus well on section two and three to make up for it. And finally, the idea of proofreading your work. I think proofreading is very, very important, especially in section three, because sometimes you can have many spelling errors within it that you didn't re didn't realize. And when you proofread it, you can have a look back. Uh, also, the idea if your structure doesn't really flow or like the one or two sentences are out of place, you can easily change it. But even in section one, section two, the GCSE, so especially section two with the GCSE questions, there's often loads of trick words there to catch you out. And so when you reflect back, you can notice those words and then be able to quickly change your answer options to make them more suited, um, so more suited to the question. So those are my overall tips and tips for each section. And I think, I hope, hopefully this video really helped you guys and best of luck for 3rd of November. Um, I'll be uploading more videos, hopefully um, about my room tour, about what Imperial is like so far. Um, so stay tuned for that.